approaching two seconds and still then I have two huge boxes standing there on the other side which I can't fit in the other room so it's probably even worse without them so this is not my first attempt I've actually tried this once already it was me against the room and the room beat me badly I mean I really should have known better, I have a master of science, I had some of the best scores in physics in my entire university and still I screwed up. So what I did was that I just ordered some sound panels, let's see. I ordered 10 of these. I felt that really should be enough and these are, these are premium panels, 10 of these cost me almost a thousand bucks and yeah I felt that that seemed a lot right but I didn't do any calculations I didn't do any tests and this time it will be different now I have brought some real scientific tools here First we will measure the room reverberation time or impulse response. It's not completely empty in here, I already have two of these huge boxes in here, but it's close enough. It is time. Now let's bring this recording into audition. I have this amazing mix pre-recorder where with 32-bit recording you can actually recover a clip that's clipped like this one. Then let's save it and we open it in another almost 20 year old software called Room EQ Wizard. And as you can see 60 dB decline seems to take 1.4, 1.5 seconds. But what's more interesting is that we can actually see this per frequency. Most frequencies are indeed 1.4, 1.5 seconds, there's some lower frequency which has a peak. But this is all measured after the fact. What if we want to predict this before we've built it? Come to the rescue, Wallace Clement Sabine, born 1868. He figured out that you can calculate the 60 dB reverberation time or decay time very easily by taking a constant 0.161 which is related to the speed of sound times the volume of the room divided by the absorption capability of the materials times the area of those materials. It makes sense, doesn't it? Huge volume like a big cathedral, very long reverberation time more area of absorbing material and better absorbing material, less reverberation time. Now of course all materials in the room are not the same, so we just add up the absorption of each material times the area of that material. Let's bring it into Excel. So the volume of the room, width times depth times height, area of the first wall, approximate a little bit here, so width times height of the room with the glass windows. Then we need the absorption coefficients, the Sabines. They are available for different materials, you can find on Wikipedia, and there are many much more detailed sources. Then we just multiply the area times the absorption coefficient, and let's do this per frequency. And for all materials in the room, walls, ceiling and floor. And let's add them up for each frequency. Now we can easily calculate the 60 dB reverberation time by taking the constant times the volume divided by the total Sabines. And let's do this again per frequency. So if we calculate it right, this should be the time that it takes a sound of each frequency to decay 60 dB. So now let's go back to our measurement. What was it we had? It was 1.4, 1.5 seconds on most frequencies. And look, that's exactly what we had calculated. 
Now let's add in the 10 panels that I bought first. Okay, so let's test again. Hello. In summary, just not good enough. And I could have predicted that. Back to the formula. And I just add the area of the sound panels here, 7.4 square meters. And the absorption coefficients is what's published in the product spec of the panels. Rest of the walls and everything else is the same. Then this is what we get. Little above one second on the lowest frequency and 0.8 seconds on the rest. And look, that's almost exactly what we measured. Better than before, but 0.8 seconds is still a lot and I could easily have predicted this. Actually a main issue is this beautiful giant wall of glass here. And that's where I will start, with the curtains. Okay, with that done, it's time for the ceiling. In addition to the previous 10 panels, I bought 30 pieces of this product. It's from a Swedish company, made apparently 50% from recycled PET bottles. It's really light. It's apparently not as effective per volume as uh, mineral wool or glass wool. But I think for my specific application, it doesn't matter if this one is 50 mm deep or 70 mm deep. Because it's really light, so I can just mount it with Velcro strips. And still stiff enough to not need any frame. So for my specific application, I think those characteristics makes it absolutely perfect. And this is what I'm installing now. to go and ceiling is done I am glad you got the information that you could add a love situation Okay, here's another killer tip that you probably know already, otherwise this will change your life. You can't vacuum up concrete dust with most regular vacuum cleaners, because the dust particles are too fine, so they go into the vacuum cleaner, slowly destroys it, and you also spread the finest particles throughout the entire living space, and it becomes a nightmare to clean up. So, what you do is that you take another product that is specifically designed for that purpose. Then you put the vacuum cleaner into that product and then you use that hose 
to vacuum up the concrete dust. Then you don't have to do any cleaning afterwards and whenever you're drilling something it stays completely clean, 100%. I'm a sucker for good tools. Bucko, the Swedish company that invented the adjustable wrench, their tools last for hundreds of years. Okay, that makes 10. Okay, second station is up. Now this one's next. We are done. Okay, it is the moment of truth that we have been waiting for. I will now close the curtains and let's do the final test. You could write away here the difference. So let's see if we could have calculated this. So I just add the different materials, same way as before, the size of them and their respective absorption coefficients. Then this is what we get. Not so much difference at 125 Hz, but from where voice is starting, there is an enormous reduction. Now let's check the measurement, see if that's a dream or reality. This is before, the numbers outside the scale. This was with the 10 panels and this is the measurement after. So let's see what we calculated. At 125 hertz, approximately one second. Look, one second. At 250 hertz, 0.38. 250 hertz, look, 0.38. 1000 hertz, 0.26. 1000 hertz, 0.23. 2000 hertz, 0.28. Look, 0.28. 4000 hertz, 0.26. And look, 0.26. Sabine, you are my hero! In this new world, shouldn't everyone be interested in making better video content? If you've learned anything today, please do take one second to subscribe and I guarantee you that you will learn something new. Thank you very much. Larsson out. Stay safe. Hej då!